for having me. Well, great to see you. And of course, we want to start with Maui. I know that a lot of your efforts have been focused there uh, over the last six months. Thursday is a grim milestone. We mark six months uh, since those devastating wildfires. What can you tell us about housing? Let's start there, as we as we often do, about how many folks are still in need and how much progress you've made. Yes, yeah, so thank you for that. Uh, it is a, a central focus of all that we're doing right now. Housing was already central statewide, and so the Maui challenge is just enormous. Um, six months on Thursday, we had, if you want people to remember the big picture, we had 3,000 families displaced, which amounted to about 12,000 individuals from, from the fire. Uh, and we have since uh, the fire you know, started, first put uh, people into hotels, you knew about that, that was just under 8,000 individuals and now gradually moving people into long-term housing is the goal. So we now have moved 36% of those that were in short-term hotels, uh, hotel rooms into long-term rentals. So 36%, that means that we went from uh, 7,796 people in hotels. As of this morning, we got down to 4,984. So we have a long way to go, uh, but there is some good news. We have now gotten contracts for many, many short-term rentals converted to long-term rentals. So uh, it breaks down kind of like this. We have this other 2,000 families to steadily move into you know, long-term arrangements, and the feds have 1,415 units available. So out of those 2,000 families, we have 1,415 available. Then also my Department of Human Services has 300 additional units that they are in contract with and beginning to move people to. And on top of that, we have CNHA and their effort, which has been extraordinary. So we're getting close. Uh, by last count, as of this morning, we were just under 2,400 available long-term rentals to put people into, and we need about 3,000. There's one other thing I should comment on. Uh, approximately 400 families can likely move back into their homes that were outside of the burn zone, but were either blocked from going there or there was a problem with their power or their water, those things are being remedied or have been fixed. So truthfully, we're at about 2,400 out of 2,600 available. People are getting the background checks done. We're keeping people housed until they're into long-term uh, accommodations, and then we'll start building. So there's a lot of progress, but I know it can't happen fast enough for people. Over the next five to six weeks, we hope to move another thousand families into these long-term rentals and get them back into a normal life. Uh, and so if you can maybe just expand a little bit more because you know there have been those shocks of that. You, you've said that you would uh, go into the point if you needed to use emergency powers uh, to require some of these individuals who have these short terms to force them over. Do you feel confident or do you feel optimistic that maybe you don't have to exercise uh, that given the rate at which we are seeing housing become available right now? What's well, a big improvement since a month ago when we spoke. I, I was less optimistic then. I'm much more optimistic now that we will get enough units and not have to use this quote nuclear option. Uh, but I do want to expand on that. So uh, we still need 500 units just for argument's sake, because some people will have second thoughts. Other people will just refuse to go to a certain house that's too far away from the school and so on. So we need about 500 more uh, short term rentals to convert to long term rentals. We'll pay the full boat and they'll get the tax break, remember from property taxes. So please do write in. Uh, we've been using the, the email Maui housing 2024 at fema.dhs.gov. Now they have enough for their program, but they're shifting them over to us at the state. So contact us, contact the um, Red Cross and, and other folks that are on the ground there if you will you know, consider renting your unit. Now, having said all that though, we still have a massive problem and it's gonna to be tough in two years also. We've done some deep dives into the short-term rental challenge that we have. And I know I shared at the State of the State address some data, like for instance, 52% of short-term rentals are owned by people on the mainland or 27% of those who own short-term rentals own 20 or more units. Well, we now know how many properties are in short-term rentals statewide. It's 89,693. 89693. And guess how many of those are essentially illegal? 74,000 of them. Okay, so 74,000 of the short term rentals aren't on the legal platforms that are 
paying their taxes and whatnot, they're not somehow fully, uh, I guess, credentialed and approved. That's 74,000 units of housing that our local families need. And on Maui, the number is a little higher than we thought. It's actually 31,000 short-term rentals. So you know how I was saying, look, if just 10% would come, we'd be fine. Well, that was about right because 10% of 31,000 would be 3,100. So what we need to do is we do need to move a fair number of those short-term rentals into local ownership. That will be great. Uh, or just local long-term rental capacity. So that would also be quite good. And that has to happen kind of soon. We'll solve the, Ma the Maui problem in the short term, but the much longer play requires the legislature and the councils in each of the counties to really get super duper serious on converting these short-term rentals. And that means probably much higher taxation, prohibitions on perhaps running them from afar. New York just did some significant legislation. My understanding is that they dropped their number of short-term rentals by over 85% really quickly. So housing markets that are tight, like Hawaii, Maui in particular, New York, Paris, these places, you know, they're not taking care of their people adequately. And so that's what we have to do. Well, you know, kind of building on that, it sounds like you won't have to use the moratorium for Maui in this circumstance. Hopefully th those 500 will cross over. But do you still sort of hold, reserve the right to do that if the kinds of ch adaptations that you're talking about, the legislation that would be necessary, does not pass this session? Yeah, there's going to be a couple um, key moments. First, of course, getting all of these families into long-term housing is our primary goal. And that appears to be happening pretty well. Plus, we're going to start building some transitional housing where we will immediately uh, house individuals that were somehow not approved by FEMA or on the bubble and, and not getting all the care they needed. So we'll do that pretty quickly. That takes six or eight months. But afterwards, after we pass like the 18-month mark where FEMA is providing all this extra support, paying for the rents, and we're paying for people's rents, we're going to have a big problem. We refer to that as the housing cliff. And at that point, I hope people don't think that we're going to be able to continue to pay the seven, eight, nine thousand dollars a month for these rentals. We just can't do it. It's one thing when it's a natural disaster and we're helping people through a long period of time. It's another thing just to be responsible, you know, in the long run with taxpayer dollars. And so we need these conversions. I'm going to ask people to get out of the market, out of the short-term rental market, and sell their properties to local folks. And in the process of doing that, we will waive, this is the bill I promoted or proposed, we will waive their capital gains tax and their conveyance tax, which will save them, you know, like 15%. And so it's fine. We weren't going to get that tax anyway if they didn't shift. And they were probably an illegal Airbnb anyhow, or illegal rental anyway, based on these numbers. Take that money and please go and buy somewhere else. You know, do what you want to do with your money, but sell the property to someone that will either be living here or will rent to a local family at a normal rate.